Hello, I'm Elizabeth Simonton, CEO of ICU Baby. And we also have Leah Giannetti, ICU Baby's Operations Director at South Miami Hospital. ICU Baby is a South Florida-based nonprofit organization that supports families with a baby NICU. Today, we have the complete privilege of speaking with Michal Chassal and Isaac Wernick, co-founders and co-owners of Baby Catan, an international company that is also based here in South Florida. Baby Catan sells a variety of products, but they really are best known for their award-winning Baby Catan carrier. Michal and Isaac have had babies in the intensive care unit themselves and are both parents of children with special needs. They developed the Baby Catan specifically to provide the sensory nourishment babies need for optimal development. And Leah and I have spent some time coming up with five questions to ask them that we think parents want to know. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Leah, to get this conversation started. Thank you, Beth. Well, the very first time that our families have their babies and their very first baby wearing moments is holding their babies in the kangaroo care or skin to skin position. So since skin to skin and kangaroo care is a common practice in our hospitals with newborns and with premature babies, what are the benefits of skin to skin? Um, okay. If you want, I can jump in because we don't have a set order of answering things, but I, I do want to just start with saying that we're super thankful to be able to do this. And we did both have babies that were in the NICU. So I was just thinking about how having a baby is challenging enough. Having a premature baby is a, a little bit more challenging. I can't even imagine how much more challenging it would be to do that during a pandemic. So with that said, um, skin to skin, Kangaroo care is skin to skin, or also known as, and it's practiced in all hospitals in the NICU units. Um, and it's actually like a low-tech invention developed in South America as like an expensive, inexpensive, sorry, practical alternative to incubator care. So like the amazing thing is that it's just like free <laughs> because it's putting your newborn right on you, skin on skin, and it has so many benefits that it's mind blowing. Um, and, you know, there's like always, you know, a list of benefits of how it helps, but there's a lot of obvious ones that when you start to talk about them, you realize that they make sense. Like the baby feels your heartbeat and your scent and the rhythm of your voice, your breathing, which are all comforting. I mean, no matter what, um, it helps regulate your baby's temperature. They gain weight they succeed at breastfeeding, they cry less frequently, they have improved oxygen levels. I mean, there's just all these known facts from the benefits of skin on skin. And that's where it leads us to Wonderful. how to, right, how great it is. Yeah, and why a lot of um, families use it, and, um, do skin to skin or kangaroo care in different ways. Why would it be helpful to use a carrier such as um, the baby Catan to do kangaroo care or skin to skin? I'll let Isaac take the stage here. No, you can answer. I have, I'll, I'll answer the next one about bringing it home. You can answer. <laughs> All right. Um, so basically, when, when you're in the NICU, you're, you're likely not going to be able to strut around a lot. Um, and so placing the baby directly on you is more likely how you're going to do it. However, when you are able to move around, and even when you're in a seated position, the baby Catan carrier will actually just add that extra help where you are still practicing skin on skin, but your hands free. So again, you know, it's, it's a lot of times it's a little of the obvious that when you talk about it, you realize, oh, that makes sense. I want to put the baby directly on me, but here's an item of baby gear that's somewhat like clothing, like a shirt. And if I wear it and I have that baby on me skin on skin, my hands are free, right? And I can do things. So, you Let know, when that picture, Michal, if that's okay. Oh, sure. And the kangaroo hold. So the pictures that you're showing now are not necessarily skin on skin because the parent or the caregiver in the picture is wearing a shirt. However, you can replicate. That's our kangaroo hold for newborn babies. And um, it is somewhat replicating the, the womb, you know, environment, like that fetal position. That's my favorite position, by the way. I love that kangaroo hold. But um, so in order to do that with a baby katan to practice kangaroo care, you would remove your shirt and your infant's shirt, and then you would place your newborn skin to skin in that kangaroo hold or even our hug position 
on you, but then you would have your hands free. Wonderful. Thank you. And so after um, the baby goes home and they're getting bigger and they're growing, how can parents continue to practice baby wearing? Um, what would that look like? And why is it so important for our parents to continue doing that? Um, hi, thank you for including us in this amazing program. I'd like just to add to what Michal said. So, I mean, to be at home now is to, and to have a baby katana or any baby carrier um, is especially useful because, you know, the, the usual answer is just the logistics wise, your hands free, you could take care of other, you could do the wash, you could take care of other kids. Um, but I was just thinking about it being in quarantine. I think it's an amazing time to really take advantage of this quiet bonding time with your baby. What a baby carrier is so useful for is really the bonding, really the connecting time, the quiet time um, with the baby. And if there's ever a time to do it, now's the time. <laughs> so it just makes this time special and calm and, and connecting. Uh, and I think it just makes a very difficult uh, di a situation that could be wonderful and, and connecting and beneficial to you and your baby. And sort of just to add in there that, you know, using a baby carrier in general, and of course we always talk about baby katan because that's, that's our carrier. Um, it's not only practical, but it also does help promote a strong parent child bonding. And it has so many other, you know, developmental benefits. So it leads into all the different things that we were saying why skin on skin is beneficial and that it promotes healthy development and less crying and weight gain. And then when you roll into like all the benefits of baby wearing and why it's effective, you sort of come up with the same list and more. So it promotes early language development. Like it's amazing. Aside from the obvious practical things where your hands are free and you're like, oh, my hands are free. Mm -hmm. So the baby can be on me and I can do things and I can work and I can clean and I can take care of my other kids. But it, it, there's so many benefits of baby wearing that I think people don't realize, which is why baby carriers, baby slings, baby wraps have become so much more popular over time as parents are realizing this. And it's an age old practice. You know, people have been taking their babies and wrapping sheets around them and taking them out and about for as long as we have ever studied history. They just weren't branded and marketed. And we went ahead and, you know, sort of, you know, created a different style of baby carrier and patented the baby katan. But the concept doesn't, you know, it, it lends to the same benefits of everyone carrying a baby or wearing a baby on them. And that's why it's called baby wearing. So, I mean, there's even things that are studies that have proven that the baby's calmer and cries less, which makes the parent calmer. I mean, when we say the fourth trimester, one of our favorite terms is the fourth trimester, because it provides a gentle way of transitioning babies from the calm environment of the womb to that of the outside world, which can be fright, like awfully frightening. Even for me, it's still frightening today. <laughs> and so for a newborn baby and a preemie, it's super frightening. And this is like just one way to ease that, ease that tense feeling that that baby would get without even knowing what a tense feeling is by holding them close to you and them smelling your skin and feeling your heartbeat. So even when they're not a preemie, it's, it's tremendous. They even say that babies and carriers are more receptive to learning and display enhanced visual and auditory alertness. So like things like that just are amazing to hear when you're like, oh, I thought it would just give me hands free. Yeah, it's really incredible. Even into gross motor development, it's really wonderful. Every, yes, every single thing in language development makes sense because they're closer to your face to hear you talk. They have a bird's eye view of the world. They're seeing the same thing you're seeing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the, it just enhances their brain development even with a stimulus that they're getting. Um, yeah. <laughs> So um, Isaac, you mentioned, so did you too, Michal, about uh, the outside world being a little bit scary. And um, we were just on a call with March of Dimes COVID-19 family education series uh, just the other day, actually. And the contributors stressed the importance of baby wearing in a baby carrier. Um, it's a great way to keep your baby close. If you're worried about someone approaching you, it keeps people sort of um, a bit distant away. Um, it gives you more physical space. We don't want to be leaving our house right now, especially with a newborn baby, unless we absolutely have to. 
but this point she made really highlighted just one of the many benefits of baby wearing right now during the time of COVID-19. Um, I was wondering in your expertise, uh, you sort of touched on it a little bit, but why is baby wearing so important, particularly now? Well, I think it's not necessarily an expertise, but I think it's just practical. I think, um, I, like I, 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 again, what you said about limiting the amount of exposure and going out into the public during, during this time. But if you do have to, uh, you know, there are times you do have to go out and you have to bring your baby. So just being in a grocery store, uh, I was in, I was using a carriage, a, you know, one of the, the food carriages. And I was just imagine, imagining if that was a baby carriage. <laughs> so the, then when the baby's out there, it's sort of hard to keep your personal space and your mm -hmm. social distancing. Um, so I just realized right there that if, if this was a baby carriage instead of a food trolley, I'd rather have the baby close close to me and and up tight so I could keep I could actually control it I could keep the social distance, whereas with you have a big carriage in front of you it's very difficult. So mm -hmm. I felt right away that was a benefit. Um, there's also some of the positions that you just sh showed the kangaroo positions that's also you know beneficial because it's keeping the, the baby very close. The baby's face while it is kissable and visible, you're able to still keep it close to your heart and close to you. So. It is keeping away a social distancing that you could have some control over. Let me share a graphic that you all shared with us, which is really incredible here, um, about you know baby wearing right now in uh, this time, particularly. If you want to talk a little bit about that. So I mean, yeah. So like we said, it's sort of they all roll into similar answers where it's more of the obvious. But sometimes when you list it and discuss it, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So thankfully, I mean, this this piece of baby gear, you know, this item is just way more beneficial than many other items that you might have had in your repertoire, but you don't necessarily, you know, aren't going to benefit as much from them right now. Um, so the obvious is yes, if you're homebound, it's a given, you know, needing your hands free and, and staying calm at the same time and having that baby as calm as possible, take care, you know, taking care of your other kids, washing your hands. I mean, we keep hearing about washing your hands, washing your hands. Well, yeah, if your baby's in a baby Catan carrier on you or any carrier, then yes, you have both your hands and you can wash them. <laughs> but you also can take care of your other kids. You can work remotely. You can sit at your laptop. You know, you can actually go outside to get some fresh air. And even though we were saying that, you know, obviously, if you can avoid it, because babies are, you know, immunocompromised, NICU babies are even more so immunocompromised, but little babies are more fragile anyway in the NICU population even more so, that you need to be extra cautious and diligent. So if you're gonna take a walk outside, at least you're able to have them closer to your body, in addition to all the things we talked about, having a bird's eye view, you know, and smelling your skin, feeling your heartbeat, but people won't get into your personal space. They're less likely to than them being in a stroller or in a car seat. And if you do have to go out with them and you have no choice and you have to go to a doctor appointment and you have to take them with you, then hands down, you should probably have them on you versus pushing them in a stroller if you can help it, of course, or carrying them in a car seat so that you can keep them as distant as possible from everyone else out there. You'll be wearing a mask, they will not. You should not put a mask on a baby. So at that point, and you don't want their face covered, but you do want them as close to you. And you can see in the images, you know, we always say you need to make sure you see the baby's face to make sure, and we'll get to that when we talk about safety, but you do want them as close to you and as covered as possible while you're still practicing safe baby wearing. Um, and so, yeah, we just threw that infographic together because it was just pointing out the obvious, you know, how helpful it can be right now. Another thing I just want to throw in there, though, is that, you know, with us, and I feel that it, it's, it's sort of like we, you know, we're lucky that automatically it's already because we're like a t-shirt, you know, or, or cloth, like a piece of clothing, it's very easy to care for. So you can throw it in your washing machine and your dryer on, on a high heat setting. And, and clean it and, and make it germ-free as often as your heart desires, or as often as you feel that, that it's appropriate. And you're not able to do that necessarily with other baby carriers right now that are structured and have a lot of hardware, you know, buckles and rings and zippers. They don't easily throw into a washing machine or a dryer, as we know, just like if you had a backpack, you wouldn't necessarily throw it into your washer and dryer. And then there's other, 
baby carriers out there that are long wraps. They're yards and yards of fabric. When you put that on, it will touch the ground. There's just no way around it. So it's just a fact. That is how they're designed to wrap around you. The last thing we want right now is for our carrier to touch the ground, whether outside or inside, especially outside. And if we have you know, no hardware and we're just all fabric and washing and drying, it just offers that extra layer of protection. So I think that in a sense, you know, we we're talking about how it helps during this pandemic, but there's little things that are obvious again, but they add even more to the advantages. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's so it's there's so many wonderful um, benefits of baby wearing, and you already touched on it right here, which is the most important thing, which is safety. And you've mentioned a few things about position, um, and you've also sent over some great um, images for us to share. Um, but I want to see if you can talk a little bit about them and um, and share those those like points of real. Um, good quality interest that's for people to pay attention to when they're um, putting their baby um, into a carrier, um, such as baby Catan or whatever it seems to be for them. Isaac, you want to take um, on no, the oh, infographic? No, you could do it. You could do it. Okay, so right now the infographic that we're looking at is the ticks infographic. And the the cool thing about that is that it's just this acronym that was put together in the baby wearing world to sort of do a quick reminder of the things that you need to be mindful of and diligent about. So you can read it, but you know, tight in view at all times, close enough to kiss, keep chin off chest, supported back. Things that again, we would think are obvious, they're not necessarily obvious. You know, and so we just want to make sure that you always have to be diligent, be diligent. and practice safe baby wearing. Um, and then another common sort of go-to catchphrase in the baby wearing world is visible and kissable. And that's a really good one. It's actually easier to remember than ticks. But visible and kissable is one of those don't ever forget those two words. When you're wearing a baby in a baby carrier, make sure that they're clearly visible. You can see their airways. You make sure that they're not positioned in a way that might compromise their airways, like a chin to chest position that can create positional asphyxiation. Um, you always carry your baby in a more upright position, ensuring that your airway is free and clear. Um, and then kissable. Kissable is more of, can you lean down like that and kiss the top of your baby's head? If you can't, they're too low. Whatever baby carrier you're wearing, they're too low and they might get lost in the carrier. So visible and kissable is a really great go-to catchphrase as well. For the baby Catan carrier, we are a little different than your average carrier, which is what makes us unique and we are very proud about but we are similar to somewhat like an article of clothing we, we try to equate it to that even though we're not clothing but it's because we have sizing for the caregiver the mom the dad anyone wearing it for the adult so similar to picking your correct size you know in, in something you're going to wear we emphasize as, as best we can you know with our sizing charts and we have a sizing calculator we offer live fit and safety checks that are scheduled with our customer care team. Anything that we can do to help you ensure that you are picking the correct size for you so the baby is up high and they're visible and kissable. And I, I think to add to that, that was that's that's perfect, Michal. But I think to add to that, um, I think I'm sure you went you experienced this, Michal, with your son, but with my son, because he was vulnerable when he was first born. Um, I definitely spoke to his physician first before doing anything. I think that's an important, yes, it's of course important, important to take personal responsibility and follow the rules that, and, and regulations that Michal just went over. But also I think it's important to speak to your doctor, especially with uh, a NICU, with a NICU baby. I think for sure that's an important first step. Yeah, we always say that no matter what, if you are, if hands down, if you have a, a premature baby, then you you must consult with your physician before you do anything. Um, and then for all babies that are, you know, leading up to, you know, four months and under, 
you should check on them regularly and make sure that they are positioned correctly. I mean, there's other safety checks that you do need to know when using a baby carrier that, you know, I didn't mention, but ones that I know we, we would say, oh, it's obvious, but you have to monitor your baby's temperature. You know, remember that the adult carrying that baby can get, their body can get warm. You have another body on you. So you just need to monitor it. They might be bundled up because it's cold where you are, but then they might overheat. Um, you have to pay attention to the legs and heads, especially. Um, remember that toddlers have long reach, so keep a well away from like objects if you're carrying a baby that's older and they can grab something. Another thing is you want to bend at the knees so that sure when, sure again. when you when you are picking something up, you know, bend at the knees to pick it up. Don't lean forward. You don't want the baby falling out of the baby carrier. So things that you might think again are obvious. Are important to point out, you know, and we we we'll, we'll always point these out, and we have them in our safety checks and our in our owner's manual. But you know, oftentimes I think without without thinking it through, you might lean down and get something, or you might lean over a hot stove and and forget for a minute because you're one with the baby, which is beautiful and amazing. But you do need to stay clear of something that's hot or or a jagged edge, you know, or don't drive in a car with a baby and a baby carrier, you know, put them in their infant car seat. When you get out of the car, it's a lifesaver, but not in the car. You know, don't ride a bike or a motorcycle with your baby in the baby carrier. So things that someone might go, oh, right, I know that. Well, guess what? <laughs> Sometimes we've seen it. <laughs> hear about things like that. So, so yeah, so those would be like all the things that you say, you know, also with, um, their hip, you know, for like we're certified a hip healthy carrier and it's important to look for that with all baby carriers that you're going to purchase for the certifications, the regulations that they've um, followed, you know, the ASTM guidelines in the US or EU certified or every other country that they're sold in and done all the proper testing for the product. But also you wanna make sure it's a hip healthy product so that they're able to be seated in an M position um, and so their back is, is you know, and you, that we had that in the infographic. So also for their spine to be correct. So all these things are, are in addition to ensuring that their airway is free and clear and they're not compromised in any way that they, that they can't breathe, you know, that you see their face and they're visible and kissable. Wonderful. I mean, such valuable information always. We always want to be skin to skin. We always want to be baby wearing, but I think particularly now, you know, moms do need a break. They need, do need to exercise self-care and take a walk. And when they do that, it is such an ideal tool to have baby wear and protect their baby's face. We want to encourage everyone to stay home, of course. But if you are going out, the, the carriers are such a great idea. I mean, really, it's a product that was designed for this time almost. <laughs> um, yeah. So just, a, just a reminder, Baby Katan does offer fit and safety checks, which I think is just such a huge advantage. So if you call and you speak to someone, on your team, which is just really incredible. So we wanna thank you so much for this information. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your support always of ICU Baby. You've been wonderful collaborators and partners of ours. And um, we hope that everyone watching enjoyed this segment. We hope you enjoy, enjoyed your time and learned a bit. And also we'll tune into our next Baby Wise. So thank you so much and uh, stay health, healthy and well. Thank you for having us. We love, we love you guys. You. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Right. Stay safe and healthy.